Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zillow Tech, and this past week was really busy with the release of iOS 18 beta 3 and iOS 17.6 beta 3. There's even more to talk about since the iOS 18 beta 3 is out what's new video, and we'll talk about the overall experience and talk about your comments as far as what you had to say with the overall experience of iOS 18 beta 3, iOS 17.6 beta 3, and also talk about a very serious issue that's affecting some people that are running iOS and iPhones. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but first let's talk about a little bit of Apple news. Now the Delta game emulator released some time ago on iPhone, but on July 11th, it was actually made available on iPad, but in the alternate app store, we're still waiting for approval in the United States for the Delta game emulator to be iPad native with full screen iPad apps. And you could have multiple windows of it using stage manager and also use handoff between iPhone and iPad. That version hopefully will be available soon outside the third party app stores. But if you're in the EU, you should be able to use that right away. Now, if you've been using Google photos and you want to switch over to Apple photos or maybe Amazon photos or something else, you can actually download a copy of all your photos and videos. Google made this available on their website. It says copy your photos and videos to a service outside of Google. You'll sign in and then you can download all of your information here and then save it wherever you'd like. So they're making that a little bit easier. If you want to pull them out of here, back them up elsewhere, or just save them locally to your own device. Apple vision pro is now launching outside the United States. In fact, it's now available in Canada and other countries around the world. And now that it's launched, the Sun actually interviewed Tim cook. And he said he uses it every day. He said the ability for me to get into the position that I want to get in, including lying flat and putting the screen on the ceiling is an incredible kind of experience. And of course it's a hundred foot screen. I mean, it's amazing the level of entertainment that it delivers. So that's something that is definitely nice about vision pro when you have some extra time, you want to watch a movie in a giant theater. That's all your own. You can definitely do that, but it makes it hard to share with family. So that's one of its downsides, but either way, it is a great consumer experience as far as media and things like that. Now, Apple is pushing the Apple watch on a new website. They're actually showing how it could benefit using this with kids. It's great for calling kids sort of tracking where they're at and you can manage it from your iPhone. It's an all new website. I showed the other day, you've got school time where it sort of disables some features you can use find my, and then of course they can sort of update it how they'd like with different themes and wallpapers and more like that. So different bands and things for children. So that might be why they're probably working on a plastic version going forward, apparently according to rumors, and we'll probably see some updates with that going forward in September. But either way, I'll link this in the description if you want to check it out. And it talks about how it's great to use for kids. Now, Google maps actually gains a live speedometer this week. That's one of the updates. So if you're using maps, that's something that you have. If you're getting directions, you can see a live speedometer, not only on the iPhone, but also in CarPlay. So that's something that was recently updated this week. Something odd that was updated specifically from Apple has to again do with vision pro vision pro currently has a few betas available and those betas will only be available to developers. Vision OS 2.0 will not be made available as a public beta for some reason. Now, most people that buy a vision pro for $3,500 or more based on the spec are going to probably just sign up for the developer beta anyway, if they want to try it out. But either way, that's a bit of a shame as the developer beta 2.0 is much, much better than the previous versions of the stable versions of vision OS, at least in my experience. So it seems much better. Latency is better using it with a Mac and much more. So I really think they should make this more of a public beta and maybe they just don't have enough devices that have been sold. Now, as far as new features, I covered 20 plus new features to iOS 18 beta three in a video the other day, but there's one more thing I wanted to mention. Aaron P 613 on Twitter or X said that beta three introduces permissions for MDM to limit access to AI features and iPhone mirroring. So that's something that will be available for those that manage different devices devices. So you can see that in the code there. We're also waiting for Apple intelligence. This is something that's only coming to the iPhone 15 pro and 15 pro max, at least to start and should bring a bunch of really helpful features. I'm still waiting to try it out. Of course, it's already in the emulator. So that means it's probably in the code, but they just haven't enabled it yet. We're also waiting for Siri 2.0. And you may have heard from my previous video this week that it looks like it's going to be delayed till 2025. It seems we're also waiting for that phone call recording. So that's something I can't wait to try out, see how well it works. And I never thought Apple would bring that to this device since there's so many different odd laws around the world in the way of that. But either way, 
that should be available, hopefully in the next beta or public beta. We'll talk about when to expect that a little bit later. And to go along with the title of this video, this is very important or very serious. Apple has warned a large number of iPhone users in 98 different countries around the world that they've been targeted by a mercenary spyware attack. The attack could also reveal almost all of your personal data on your iPhone. TechCrunch actually had an article about it and you'll see where it says they warned iPhone users in 98 countries of spyware attacks. So this is very, very serious and important to listen to if you get this notice. In fact, if we scroll down, down here, you can see what it says. Apple detected that you're being targeted by a mercenary spyware attack that is trying to remotely compromise the iPhone associated with your Apple ID. And then it gives that information there. The company wrote that in the warning to affected customers. It says this attack is likely targeting you specifically because of who you are or what you do. Although it's never possible to achieve absolute certainty when detecting such attacks, Apple has high confidence in this warning. Please take it seriously. Apple added in the text. And it also mentions how users in India may be among many who have received this. What Apple actually recommends if you get this issue is to go into your phone, go to your security settings. So down where you have privacy and security, and they recommend you use lockdown mode. This is for extreme protection. If you believe you're being targeted in a cyber attack. So if you've had this message, you may want to enable this while it makes it a little bit less convenient to use your phone. At least it keeps it secure for now. Apple also released a new document this week that sort of goes along with this, where it says recognize and avoid social engineering schemes, including phishing messages, phony support calls, and other scams. I'll link this in the description. I mentioned it earlier, but this is probably in response to those sort of messages. These happened back in April as well. So you'll see all of the different things they recommend with how to identify, identify fraudulent emails and messages. Also, if you get a suspicious phone call or voicemail and much more. So again, I'll link this in the description to go along with it, but it's very serious and important that you follow this. Take it seriously if you're seeing those messages. And if you have seen those messages, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below if you've experienced it. And this could be why we're hearing iOS 17.5.2 is in the works and ready to release soon, even though we have iOS 17.6, not that far off this coming week, we could see a bunch of different releases. I would expect iOS 17.5.2 to release since we haven't had it already. And then also iOS 17.6 RC is next week, most likely followed by iOS 18 public beta one or any sort of order of those iOS 18 public beta one could be on the 15th and they could sort those based on on what they feel is most important to push out. But once that's released, typically we'll also see an iOS 18 beta three re-release if they follow what they've done in previous years. So we'll see that to bring all of the build numbers together, and then we'll move on to beta four, probably in the following week or two after that. Then we'll have all of those releases sort of coinciding with one another within a day or two of one another. So lots to look forward to as far as that goes, but as far as the overall experience, iOS 17.6 beta three has been very stable. According to most people, a few people say it's less stable than beta two, but it looks like it's going to be a pretty solid update for those that just want a solid experience on iOS. This late in the game with iOS 17, it makes sense that it would be very stable and there's not a whole lot actually to look forward to as far as features, but some small changes here and there I've covered in different videos. However, iOS 18 beta three, while it is a little bit more stable in some ways, it's definitely less stable in other ways than earlier betas. But either way, Apple continues to add features and refinements, but there's definitely a few bugs worth talking about. There's multiple reports of using RCS messaging and in messages. If you're sending RCS messages, some people on the Android side are reporting that they're receiving multiple messages of the same kind. Now I've texted one person or message one person that actually has RCS. They thought I was using an Android phone because they didn't realize iOS had it so far, as far as iOS 18 is concerned. But either way, when I messaged them, they didn't report duplicates, but some people are. If you customize the control center, you may find that it automatically jumps back outside of the customization. I've actually had this on my device. I fully customized this with a couple pages, sort of simplified it. And then I went back and all of a sudden after a reboot, it was back to how it was before. So I'm going to hold off customizing this. I've customized it a little bit on beta two. You'll see here. And the reason I didn't change it back as well, it changes back on its own. Sometimes even in beta two, there's definitely some issues with it. Some people are unable to customize the home screen even after a reboot. So if you press and hold, go to edit, go to customize. Some people don't have the option. It doesn't pop up. Other people are having issues customizing buttons or the tint isn't working properly. And 
other people are finding that a reboot solves this. It's very hit or miss, but we're not having the issue where the icons are blank this time. Right after installing the update, I did see that in settings where certain things such as notifications actually had a blank icon, but then later it remedied itself on its own. Accessibility sometimes will continually use the microphone. I've seen that on a few different devices and also notifications or notification badges don't seem to work consistently. For example, mail was causing a lot of issues for me. So I switched to Canary mail right now because it wouldn't update with badges. Wouldn't let me know when new messages were coming in. So I changed that to this mail app until we have an update with Apple intelligence. Also, the alarm bug seems to be back with iOS 18 beta three, where sometimes it just doesn't sound your alarm. In fact, I actually had that today before making this video, waking up this morning, it actually had a problem where it just didn't sound. And I've heard from you that this has happened to a few of you as well. So this is something they definitely need to resolve why it's not fixed yet. I'm not sure. Another issue is spotlight search, not showing up for some people. So they'll go into spotlight and then they just don't have the option to use it. So if you want to search for Apple, sometimes it wasn't working or it just doesn't show up at all. Also screen time isn't working properly for some people. Now it is working again for me in this beta, but some people see it crash right away when you go into screen time and settings. So thankfully it's working for me. Sometimes a reboot fixes it, but definitely some people are having the issue as far as bug fixes. Well, I mentioned already the app icons are no longer disappearing and the storage bug seems to be fixed. I haven't heard from anyone else where the storage was taking up a huge amount. In fact, I did hear from one person that hasn't been able to move to beta two using their device because the storage bug took up so much of their data that it was filling up their phone to the point where they couldn't install the next beta. So that's definitely a bug in beta one. They supposedly resolved it in beta two but I still heard a few complaints. Beta three supposedly fixed it for everyone. So let me know if it's fixed for you. If you were having that issue, as far as the release notes, let's go ahead and take a look at that in the feedback app. So we'll go into feedback and Apple has fixed a lot of things from accessibility. If we scroll down, you'll see app intents have known issues. App stores have new features. There's known issues here and there, but lots of resolved issues with Bluetooth headphones calculator camera. They've fixed quite a few things with that. Even though some people say when they try to activate the camera from the lock screen, they sometimes get a blank camera, a reboot fixes that for most people, but it, there's still some bugs here, but they've fixed an awful lot of things. And you'll see this just scrolls on and on and on. And it's about 150 different things they've resolved in beta three. So if you're having an issue, make sure it's not listed here already as a known issue for search. For example, the help Apple improve search control is not functional in this update. So that's something that's well known. So if you're going to report feedback, I would highly suggest you do, but make sure it's not listed here already. As far as camera improvements, well, there were quite a few bug fixes there. So take a look at a few different photos. Let me know what you think between beta two and beta three different phones, as well as 17.6. Overall, I think it's pretty good. I don't notice much of a difference, but it does seem to be performing fine for me where it isn't for some others. As far as overall performance, well, it's mostly good. Some people do report lag and it depends what you're doing. I've been using it on the iPad and the iPhone full time, but things like ProMotion are nice and smooth. Although maybe there could be some improvements going into different apps, whether we're playing music, let me turn this down, play music. It should swipe into the dynamic Island smoothly. And it seems very fast here with that. So overall, I'm pretty happy with performance. I really haven't had issues, but I have had issues with heat. Sometimes when I'm just doing random tasks, the phone will heat up quite a lot right around the processor where it's actually generating most of that heat. And it just gets quite uncomfortable to hold. That happens also when charging sometimes where it overheats and tells you that it needs to cool down first to continue. So we're seeing more and more of that 17.6 though is nice and cool. So let's take a look with the thermal camera and you'll see on iOS 18 beta three, we're at about 92 degrees Fahrenheit on 17.6 beta three. We're at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, with iOS 18 beta three, we have about 33.5 degrees Celsius with 17.6 beta three, about 30 degrees Celsius or so. So overall it's a little cooler right now, but it definitely heats up randomly from time to time. And as far as the overall benchmarks, well, let's go ahead and take a look at those benchmarks completed. We have 2,768 for single core, 6,448 for multi-core. It's not great compared to what we had with iOS 17.6, but that could be because iOS 18 is doing something differently, but it's within margin of error. What we had with beta two and previous iOS 18 betas. So you'll see that here where it definitely can improve, but the overall experience feels fairly smooth just in general. 
Now, as far as the battery life, well, this is a nice little update they've had this past week. And I showed this in the what's new video, but if we go back to battery, First, let's take a look at battery health. So I'm down to 95% with 243 cycles, completely normal at about 250 cycles. You should be down about 5% on the iPhone 15 models, give or take. And then if we go over to battery, you'll see it says update finishing in the background after five days of regular use, it's still updating in the background. So it says you can use your iPhone as you normally would while a recent software update finishes. This could take a while battery life and thermal performance may improve once finished. So I'm glad they're telling us about this. And if we go into the last 10 days, you'll see if we scroll down, we'll go to, well, just today I have two hours and 12 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 46 minutes of screen idle time. And you'll see I'm down to 64%. It's not great, but it's using 6% of the battery, just still updating in the background. So they're definitely doing something. Maybe they're testing Apple intelligence and not telling us or something else is going on, but I'm glad they're actually telling us how much of our battery is being used by the update. So it does get me through a day, but barely typically I'll have to charge at the end of the night or just place it on the charger before I go to bed and hope that I don't run out of power. When it comes to overall connectivity with AirPods Pro or AirPods 3, some people are having some major issues with them with iOS 18 beta 3. So if you haven't updated to it, I'd probably hold off if you use them all day long with your iPhone. They seem pretty okay to me, but sometimes they actually have a lot of interference. So there's some odd bugs here and there with them. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.6 beta three or iOS 18 beta three, I would say if you're not on either yet, I would hold off until iOS 18 public beta one, then it's typically stable enough to try out. And then you'll still have some bugs, but it will be fairly stable. If you need a very stable experience, wait for iOS 17.6 RC, which hopefully will be this week as well. As far as what you had to say, let's take a look at some of your comments. Brianna says, you're probably sick of my voiceover reports, LOL, but I have some more information. I can now edit apps again on my home screen using voiceover. However, I cannot use the actions rotor to move controls around control center. This has been messed up since beta one. I also discovered a bug in beta two where voicemail will read notifications twice instead of once. This bug is also present in beta three. Raymond Nelson 4586 says iOS 18 beta three on iPhone 15 pro max has been kind of buggy and kind of annoying music ran randomly switches audio to another source when listening to music with AirPods on screenshots don't show up in photos, but do show up in the camera app at the bottom corner. Overlapping text is throughout the OS, but mostly visible in the calculator app and the Siri where you say, Hey, in front of it doesn't work half the time. Oliver Niehaus says running into a few bugs on my iPhone 12 pro running iOS 18 beta three. I can't customize my app icons like I could in previous versions. When I long press on an app and press edit in the top left corner, when I tap customize, nothing happens. Strange bug. Also, and this pertains to only iPad OS 18 in my experience, when I try to search for certain toggles and settings using the search bar, when I click on the search results, like type to Siri or auto brightness, for example, the settings app crashes, but only with certain toggles. If I search iCloud settings or something else, it doesn't crash. I'm using an 11 inch M4 iPad pro curious if you're having the same issues. Proper FPV 7160 says no sound on my alarm this morning with iOS 18 beta three messed me up. Kind of important for the alarm to work on Fayez says currently using the public version of iOS 17.6 beta three on my iPhone 15 pro. It seems really stable and good to use no bugs or issues at all. Battery life is good as well. No issues at all. When using beta three, we'll be updating to iOS 18 public beta one when it comes out next week. Stacy gray said using iOS 18 dev beta three on my iPhone 14. Pro and it's been great. Good performance. Battery life is on par with what I was getting with iOS 17.5.1 and no major issues encountered at all. Looking forward to beta four to see what refinements and new features are introduced. Mario Saturna says seems okay. The most time on my iPhone 15 pro max, but when I play brawl stars with my AirPods pro enabled, it somehow disconnects from the AirPods. And then after 30 seconds, they reconnect in other apps. The AirPods work as intended weird bug. So that's everything with iOS 18 beta three and iOS 17.6 beta three. I'm looking forward to the next updates as they get more and more refined and hopefully we'll see Apple intelligence. But let me know if you found any additional features I haven't mentioned in this video or previous ones in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.